today. From State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It's week 13 of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Carolina Panthers. We find ourselves at the home of the world's first retractable natural grass field as you get a look inside State Farm Stadium in Glendale. Today, we've got a week 13 matchup for you here as it'll be the Carolina Panthers taking on the Arizona Cardinals. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. Charles, you look at this Cardinal team as they get ready here. They come into this one knowing it's been a while since tasting victory. They've dropped four in a row. Can they remember what it was like to win a game? In these types of situations, you're looking for someone to inspire you, and it doesn't have to be one of your best players either. On the other side of the field for the visiting Panthers, they've been as hot as anyone. The win last week makes it 9 out of 10. The results are hard to argue. If there's a team better suited for the postseason right now, I don't know who they are. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. The Cardinals making their way out, and it's the number one overall pick in 2019, Kyler Murray at the helm. Drafted with the idea that he'd be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the NFL when he put it all together. We've been seeing that progress throughout his career. This guy's legs, we knew they were phenomenal. Arm, top notch. But now we're seeing his mind come into the game. Reed's defense is better and better each and every week and is showing patience as a passer as well. Not as eager to exit the pocket, finding guys downfield for bigger plays. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Here's the first carry of the game for Cam Akers. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Going right back to Akers. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Well, this defense for the Panthers, they were excellent in that win over the 49ers last week. And what I saw on film was a nearly unstoppable pass rush. Five sacks last week, plenty of hurries given up. So now what do you do on offense? You just max protect, keep everyone in and run the ball, or maybe just one or two receiver routes in order to try and keep your quarterback upright. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Fourth down on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds. And they'll spot it right at the 20. So here now are the Panthers for their first drive of the game. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. I like this guy. And the reason I do, he tends to stay on an even keel. Doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed, take what the defense gives him, and then he can strike at times. Had a touchdown pass. Yes, he had an interception last week, but he found a way for his team to win. That first play of the drive there is incomplete. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on 
on second and ten. Throwing again. Green. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Operating from the gun. Green. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. Here's the Panthers punter now as he's on to kick it away. Officially, and the Cards will take over first and ten. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. Play fake. Murray. And a throw right sideline is complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. That one good for 37 yards. They started this drive with terrific field position, and it's going to get even better after that play. Had great options with where they started, so they decided to press their advantage, and it paid off. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Running right on the option is Murray. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. From the eight, they've got it first and goal. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. The six yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. On the option, it's Murray. And now they're gonna get him down right at the line of scrimmage. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Murray now to throw. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Miles Garrett. He's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. And now out is the Cardinal field goal team here. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And his kick is good. And the Cardinals have the first points. It's 3-0. So after drive number three here, we have a score, and it's three points after the field goal. I would say the feeling out process for both these teams, I'd say it's over, partner. Everyone understands what's going on now. You've kind of probed a little bit. Now you want to start throwing the big shots. First three points up on the board could be significant. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. Sitting in first place in the division. They've got an open date on the calendar coming up next week. So, Charles, you and I were talking about this before the game. This one for them kind of has some extra importance. It certainly does because if they can get the win here and pad their lead a bit or at least keep pace, then they can really kick their feet up and say a job well done at this point and not have to worry about ball at all until they're back in their facility, back in their meeting room, getting ready for the next game. The numbers for him from a week ago, 23 carries, 85 yards. And we all know he had a big workload last week, so I'm eager to see if they decide to back him off a little bit. Personally, 
I hand it to him 20 plus times again. When a running back's locked in like he is, I want him to keep touching the football. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Operating from the gun. Green. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And here's Green. Throwing on first down. Room to maneuver at the 35. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Well, he was a busy man out of the backfield a week ago. They got him the ball early and often. I have no doubt in my mind that he'll be a big part of the game plan here as well. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Up the middle they go. It's Richardson. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Operating from the gun. Green escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Panther football to start quarter number two as they go to work on a first and goal. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. His second rushing touchdown on the campaign and fourth overall. And the Panthers have taken the lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite. But the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Now the try here for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Second and 10. Here's Murray. A short one here caught by McBride. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the third. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage.
On fourth down on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. This will be fielded at the 17. It's a 45-yard punt and eight on the return. And the Panthers will take over now first and 10. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they have the game here followed by the open date on their calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are. But let's face it, partner, they can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Back to throw. Green. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. stick with it on first down and this time not quite to the 30 it'll be down at the 31 yard line drain now looking to throw on second down and inside the 20 before he's brought down 16 yards to the 16 and a first down if you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Looking to throw. Green. Another one into the hands of Jamar Chase. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. Now a handoff as they run left side. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. A great effort there. His first touchdown on the year as his guys are able to extend their lead. They go I formation, fullback leads the way for the touchdown. Sort of a lost art, isn't it? It really is, but sometimes when you're able to bring it back and use it against other teams, they're not prepared for it. They haven't seen it in a while, and now you gain an advantage, and we just saw that advantage result in a touchdown. A try here for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Cardinal offense here ready to take over. They trail now 14-3, an 11-point deficit as they start things out with a first and 10. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. A 
A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Off the option, here's Akers. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. The Cardinals on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is going to be third and 13. A short one here caught by McBride. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up fourth down. three ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. Here's Corey Bohorquez now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It's taken to the 26. 43 yards on the punt. Seven yard return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. The Carolina offense about ready to go. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. To throw is green. To throw on second down. So the completion good for just three. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Back to throw. Green. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. Here's the Panthers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. first down that's complete to Michael Wilson the Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half on first and 10 here's Murray by rifles one and that's going to be intercepted 20 and it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. So they get the interception, and almost as importantly, a big return after that. And who was the guy that saved the touchdown, partner? The guy who threw the interception a lot of times. He just gives it the old ole, but give him credit. He went old school. He was determined not to make this a pick six, and he got there in time to make the tackle. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. Throwing to start the drive. Green. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. That's a really good decision right there outside of the pocket. You've got to know the right time to shift from passer to runner. He was looking and looking. Nothing there. You can almost feel the brainwaves firing as he calculates. I think I can win a race to the pylon. And he turns out to be right. Touchdown. Now the extra point try forthcoming. Oh. 
And it's 21 to 3. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Well, the Cardinal offense is going to take over late in this first half. I don't think they need to be reminded of the situation here. I mean, the clock is dwindling. Three-score deficit waiting for them at halftime unless they can get something on the board here before intermission. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. First down, Murray. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. To throw is Murray. A short one here, caught by McBride. It'll be a gain of three on what should be the final play of this first half. So we come upon halftime. Intermission here with the visiting Panthers taking the lead to the locker room. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things definitely getting interesting around the NFL as we begin the month of December. So let's get right to it. We'll start at Raymond James Stadium, an NFC South matchup between New Orleans and Tampa Bay. And it's the Buccaneers who are out in front with that game closing in on halftime. Marvin Mims, a touchdown reception. From there, we head north to Minnesota. Check on the Vikings at home at U.S. Bank Stadium. And they were winners in their ball game over the visiting Dallas Cowboys. Baker Mayfield, four touchdown passes in the victory. Finally, let's get to Silicon Valley. To check on the 49ers at home at Levi Stadium. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Brandon Ayuk, a touchdown reception. Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Panthers out in front and they will get the football first. Second half action underway. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage. And now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Here comes third down and seven. Looking to throw. Green. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 23 yards on the tuck and run. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt it for a second. They pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. Okay, ready? 
From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Hodges. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Operating from the gun, Green. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage. Because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. And they'll send the slot in motion left. And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected it. It was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. And here's Green. Looking to throw on second down. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Call it a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. And that time, finally, a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, you'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case. That has to feel good for the defense. Third down and 13. Operating from the gun, Green. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Frank Reich here on fourth down is ready to try for three. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's 24-3. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 27. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Pass to the right, and he's got McBride. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. The give running right is Akers. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 
Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Defense really kept him in check running the football in the first half. Maybe that'll be a spark for him here in half two. So two words come to mind for me. Resilient, because he has to keep bouncing back after some limiting runs. And how about relentless? Keep going, knowing that you may pop one, as he just did there. Murray now on first down. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. On the handoff, running left is Akers. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. One yard is the loss. They back up even further to a third and 15. After seeing that, maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here. Yeah, anything, change it up, because the teams that win, the best teams, they're the ones that make adjustments. Doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done. Sometimes when you open things up a little bit, you can get back to what you wanted to do before. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Pro. And a completion to Wilson. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard strike. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. Oh, look at this play call. And the ball is knocked out, and it's picked up by the Panthers. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. So they tried it. Not only did they not get the first, they fumbled it away. Yeah, it's one of those things where it went from bad to worse, but I know that everyone's going to pile in on the call and say, well, what are you doing? Why would you go for it there? I think the teams that are convinced that they feel pretty good about their game plan, what they want to get done that day, go for it. Give it a try. Hey, let's see if your defense can rescue them a little bit. They'll start on the ground here on first down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's a second and five. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. From the 48-yard line, here's the second down and four. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he is going to lose yardage here. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. How about the job there on the outside? Shed the wide receiver and was able to make the tackle on the perimeter. Panthers on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and five. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. 
Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. Here's the Panthers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this will do the job nicely as that'll be out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Throwing on first down is Murray. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. <laughs> Throwing now is Murray. Fighting to stay upright. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Multiple players getting home for the one-yard sack. Like the footwork back there, and I thought he did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end, oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, winds up getting buried for the loss. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. To throw, it's Murray. They'll roll him out right. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Miles Garrett in there again as he's able to pick up sacks on both first and second down. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them? That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Well, that last sack puts Murray and the cards in a tough spot. Third and long. Back to throw. Oh, now Murray has it stripped. And he takes it into the end zone. It's a fumble recovery and a touchdown for the Panthers. So the big fella gets on the scoreboard with a return for a touchdown. Good thing he didn't have to go too far, though. You know the trainers were very happy about that. Imagine having to go get him in the end zone, escort him to the bench, and give him the oxygen. They were loving the fact that he got in without having to run very far. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And that'll increase their lead to 28. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. It's now appearing that this losing streak is going to continue. You know, the coaching staff was confident that this was going to be the game to stem the tide, but that just has not been the case. Now Murray. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Murray now. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked up by Foyasade Aluikin. I'm not sure, Brandon, we've seen a sloppier played game this year for a team on offense. 
turn it over four times and expect to win? No chance whatsoever. And look, I have no idea what the ratio is about turning over four times and how that correlates to winning or losing, but I'll guarantee you, it's not very good. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And Charles, we are in the midst of a very one-sided affair. I think this is where you and I have to fill a little bit. You want to regale us with old stories of your childhood in New Paltz, New York? <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to hear that, but this is a perfect time for us to start listing MVP candidates, right? right. The best teams we've seen so far this year, the best games that we've called thus far, how we anticipate the season unfolding. We can go in so many different directions <laughs> because the game certainly not taking us there. Oh, I hear the remotes clicking off right now and he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22 yard line they'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground and he will lose yardage here back at the 23 yard line He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. 63 yards rushing for him now to this point. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Frank Reich here on fourth down is ready to try for three. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know, if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach is in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. Well, the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. Facing a big fourth quarter deficit here. Things not looking good. You know, this offense, though, they've been in the top half of the NFL so far this season. But in this one, where well, their defense has really struggled. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Here's Murray. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, they certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Back to throw. Murray, and he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked up by Foyasade Aluakin. And the Panthers will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. Well, they've got the huge lead. Now they have another interception on the defensive side. Seems like everything they touch in this one, Charles, turns to gold. And they have to be awfully happy right there to get what appears to be one more for the road. 
and help seal away one of their best efforts of the season. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. So this one is over, a victory for Carolina. And you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter, but second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you can win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time and the hitters get to see him, and then they come out after that and the bats start blazing, right? I think they saw their best stuff in the first quarter and just shut everything down from that point on. What a great convincing performance. So for the Panthers, the win moves them to 12 and one now on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, the playoffs look to be out of reach now as they drop to four and eight. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.